it is a pleasure to be involved in such a fantastic e-learning webinar, particularly on the use of ultrasound to guide injection therapy in MSK medicine. What I thought I'd do today, I've got about 15 or 20 minutes, I thought I'd briefly discuss why uh, a clinician like myself or other clinicians, practitioners, physiotherapists uh, would use ultrasound for injection therapy. I want to discuss briefly the evidence uh, for the use of ultrasound in injections and then give an example of how we approach teaching ultrasound guided injections and I'm going to be using the example of the trochanteric bursa and how we approach this injection and then at the final uh, few minutes I'll have a video that will outline uh, this injection as we show it on the e-learning course. So as many of your viewers know, ultrasound is increasingly being used uh, by clinicians to assist in the diagnosis and management of MSK conditions. But there's also an increasing evidence that ultrasound could be used for injection interventions uh, in different areas. And the clinicians often see this as a valuable tool uh, for use of uh, ultrasound Sorry, I can't get this up yet, uh, for uh, using ultrasound for both diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Traditionally, what clinicians uh, would do, and certainly I've done this myself when learning MSK injections, we would use landmark injections. And this is an example of a glenohumeral joint injection. And this is taught from coming from behind and infiltrating into the uh, joint. Uh, and we would often infiltrate cortisone and now regenerative um, substances such as PRP, uh, bone marrow aspirate and stem cell injections. However, there is increasing evidence that landmark guided injections have reduced accuracy and this may then lead to reduced, effective, reduced effectiveness. Uh, in addition, it can also lead to potential side effects if you're injecting substances out, outside the desired target as well as being less uh, useful as a diagnostic tool. More clinicians are recognising the uh, value of ultrasound guided injections, particularly when using substances such as cortisone and now uh, regenerative uh, interventions such as PRP, stem cells and bone marrow aspirate. In addition, ultrasound guidance also provides a practitioner with a valuable tool to perform more advanced techniques. This is an example of aspiration of a Baker's cyst using ultrasound guidance. It's very difficult to perform this injection without the use of ultrasound guidance. And also dry needling or fenestration of tendons in tendon pathology. This is an example of dry needling of a tennis elbow. I was recently attended a conference in Spain on sonosurgery and their practitioners are using ultrasound guidance for such advanced procedures like percutaneous carpal tunnel release, percutaneous A1 pulley release, uh, fasciotomies and Achilles and patella tendon scrapings. So it is important to consider that ultrasound is not only useful for the diagnostic purposes for the clinician, but also can be used in therapy. And that can also, as a result of using ultrasound, can be both diagnostic and uh, therapeutic, uh, which can help uh, patient and their clinical management. So I want to briefly discuss some of the terminology that we use when looking at ultrasound and ultrasound guided injections. We use the term axial view to describe the relationship of the transducer to the particular anatomy. So in this example, we're scanning the long head of the biceps tendon and we can see here the biceps tendon is scanned in the axial view uh, and to the right uh, is the lesser trochanter, uh, lesser tuberosity and to the left is the greater tuberosity. Uh, the image below is the longitudinal view of the biceps tendon. Uh, this is distally and scanning up to proximal. We also describe injections as being in plane or out of plane and that describes the relationship of the needle to the transducer. So an in-plane injection is where the needle is parallel to the transducer 
so that you see the whole of the needle in the imaging view. Alternatively, an outer plane view is where the needle is perpendicular to the transducer. So what you see on the image is a plane dot. And we tend to use these different types of injections for different anatomies and different pathologies. So in this example here, this is a scan of the patella tendon. What we're doing here is a longitudinal view of the patella tendon and an in-plane injection. So this injection will be described as longitudinal in-plane injection. Conversely, this injection would be described as axial, so you're getting an axial view of the patella tendon and an out-of-plane injection. So the injection would be an axial out-of-plane injection. In most cases, particularly for beginners and those that have just started using ultrasound, we would teach the in-plane approach. Uh, and here, this is an example of an in-plane approach to a hip joint injection where the needle is parallel to the transducer. And as one develops um, skills associated with using ultrasound and ultrasound guided injections, you then move on to the more difficult outer plane injections. So I often get asked the question, well, what is the evidence to suggest that ultrasound guided uh, injections are superior to say landmark guided injections or fluoroscopic guided injections? Well, this uh, uh, is a position statement by the American Medical Associ Association for Sports Medicine, and they released this uh, statement about three years ago. And it seems that their evidence is trending certainly towards the use of ultrasound guided uh, or, or ultrasound guidance for injection therapy. There's certainly extensive evidence to suggest that there is increased accuracy. There is moderate evidence to suggest uh, ultrasound guided injections are more effective and there is preliminary evidence to suggest it's cost effective. One of the systematic reviews that they looked at in their study was this paper here, which was an ultrasound guided shoulder girdle injection. Uh, and it was a systematic review and meta-analysis of the studies performed comparing ultrasound guidance uh, with landmark guidance. And they found that there was indefinite, imp unequivocally improved accuracy of ultrasound guidance compared to landmark guidance in glenohumeral joint injections, in acromioclavicular joint injections, and also in long head of biceps tendon sheath injections. In addition, there are a number of studies that have shown greater effectiveness when using ultrasound compared to landmark guided injections. These were a series of studies performed uh, in inflammatory arthropathy, arthropathy patients that had knee joint injections. Uh, there was uh, significant reduced procedure pain. There was a reduction in pain scores and improvement in therapeutic activity of cortisone in patients with inflammatory arthritis who had an ultrasound guided injection compared to those that had landmark guided injections. And finally, this is a systematic review on the cost effectiveness comparing ultrasound guided injections uh, with fluoroscopic guided injections, and there seems to be a uh, reduction in costs associated with using ultrasound guided injections compared to fluoroscopic guided injections, although the accuracy seems to be the same. So in summary, significant evidence for improved accuracy, moderate evidence for improved effectiveness, and preliminary evidence for cost effectiveness of using ultrasound compared to landmark guided or fluoroscopic guided injections. So I'm going to give you an example of how we teach ultrasound guided injections. Uh, this is a trochanteric bursal injection. Uh, certainly I tend to use these injections for patients that present with lateral hip pain, also known as greater trochanteric pain syndrome or gluteus medius tendinopathy. As a clinician, I see a lot of these cases, particularly in middle-aged females who uh, want to be active and they often present with intractable lateral hip pain. My first port of call, of course, is referring them on for physio physical therapy to perform a progressive loading program. 
But as most cold practitioners know, a sizable minority of these patients do not improve uh, with physical therapy, and we need to look at other possible treatment options for these patients. One of the treatment options I instigate is shockwave therapy. There's some low level, lower level evidence for use of shockwave therapy uh, in greater trochanteric pain syndrome, but I also consider trochanteric bursal injections. So the indications for trochanteric bursal injections are a plateauing or a failure of improvement with rehab. And so the indications include trochanteric bursitis or gluteus medius tendinopathy with tendinosis, calcification, and or a partial tear. And so the way you visualize uh, uh, the trochanteric bursa is with the patient sideline. Uh, with the probe in the axial position. On ultrasound, what we tend to see is the greater trochanter. And you can see here on in the yellow outline is the anterior facet of the greater trochanter containing the attachment of this structure here, which is the gluteus minimus tendon. Then you also have the lateral uh, and posterior facet here which contains the attachment of the gluteus medius tendon. And above that is the trochanteric bursa. And so here we have the trochanteric bursa, which is in the interface between the gluteus medius and minimus tendons, uh, and the tensor fasciolata and gluteus maximus um, uh, posteriorly. And we approach this tendon usually from posterior to anterior. So in these patients, we often use a longer needle. Again, it depends on the body habitus, but generally I tend to use a 22 gauge, 3.5 inch needle, or potentially a small needle in those patients that are slimmer. I use a combination of local anesthetic and corticosteroid. I tend to use either dipamidrol or triamcinolone, approximately 20 to 40 milligrams uh, of cortisone and two to three mils of local anesthetic. If you're looking at PRP injections, then I would be looking at injecting approximately two to four mils of PRP directly into the pathology. So in this case, if you're looking at PRP injections, you'd be injecting into the uh, tendinosis. Whereas a cortisone injection, you want to inject uh, around the tendon or within the trochanteric bursa. So in trochanteric bursal injection, I tend to use a linear transducer for those that are slimmer but you need to consider a lower frequency curvilinear probe for those patients with a higher body mass index um, due to the increased sound pe uh, penetration, which will, then, which will then lead to improved needle visibility. And so the position that we place patients usually sideline, uh, their knees and hips slightly bent, uh, patients are facing the ultrasound scan, the clinician will stand behind the patient and opposite the ultrasound scan. There are two injections we can perform. We can perform the axial injection or axial approach. So the transducer is placed in the, placed in the axial position and the needle is in plane. We enter the uh, skin through the posterior aspect that then passes through to enter the greater trochanteric bursa, which is superficial to the gluteus minimus and medius tendons. We also have the longitudinal approach. The patient is in the same position. The transducer is placed longitudinal to the tendon and the needle is in plane. So I'm gonna show a video now of that procedure. I'll be describing the procedure and uh, the video will last about two minutes. And this is typical of what we, what we have on our e-learning course, where we have uh, a description of the, uh, of the, or the theory, description of the theory, and then a video following that description. This case is a 61-year-old personal assistant who presents with a 12-month history of left lateral hip pain resistant to physical therapy. Clinical assessment demonstrated features of gluteus medius tendinopathy. Given her persistent symptoms, 
she agreed to an ultrasound guided cortisone injection into the trochanteric bursa to allow her to progress to rehabilitation. Note the ultrasound images revealing intact gluteus minimus and medius tendons. The patient is placed in a side-lying position with the left side upwards. The clinician stands behind the patient facing the ultrasound machine. The probe is placed in an axial position to visualise the gluteus minimus and medius tendons. Note that we are using a curvilinear probe to improve visualisation of the tendons. The needle enters the skin about four centimetres deep to the probe, moving lateral to medial. The target is a trochanteric bursa between the iliotibial band tract and the gluteus medius tendon. You can see the injectant tracking medially and laterally in this interface, as shown. Great. That was uh, so. That's an example of uh, a trochanteric bursal injection. We've actually done that for. Uh, every other body part. So we're looking at the hip, the knee, the ankle, and then the upper limb, the shoulder, the elbow, and the hand and wrist. Uh, and we're actually releasing uh, that e-learning um, uh, program uh, or MSK ultrasound guided injections e-learning program in about two weeks. So quite excited by this. Uh, in addition to that, what we're looking at doing is um, also uh, doing a practical course to coincide uh, with this e-learning course, and that will be performed in various uh, centres around the world. We're looking at North America, uh, Europe, uh, Asia, and also the Pacific, so it's quite exciting. So in summary, I just want to give you a taste of, of uh, what we're doing with ultrasound and ultrasound guided injections uh, to uh, emphasize that it's a very effective tool for practitioners, not only for diagnosis, and also, but also for therapy. We're using it to um, guide interventions. There is increasing evidence of use, not only in accuracy, but also uh, in effectiveness and cost effectiveness. Uh, but it's a difficult skill and it requires uh, lots of practice. Uh, in in uh, in in becoming skilled at producing uh, at performing these injections.